Okay, so we've completed the construction of the valve gear and now we have to deal with the valve timing. And um, the first thing we have to do is, if you like, a static timing. And uh, you've noticed I've got a, a clamp on the reversing rod and um, the valve gear is now in the neutral, the mid, mid position. So when I turn the wheels, the valves in the valve chest they won't be moving at all just let me show you that okay in this position the valve is supposed to be central in the valve chest covering both inlet ports and as you perhaps can see that's not the case certainly with this one and also with this one so the way to do that is to remove the radial arm from the valve spindle turn the spindle to move the valve into its central position so I'll do that now on both sides so I've removed the radial arm, there it is, and the idea now is I have to rotate this spindle to show you where the, you see it's way off centre there, so I'm going to rotate the spindle, see if I can do that with the camera in my hand, to bring it over the middle, so that both ports are So that's about covered. You can see it there. Yeah, both ports are covered. That side and this side. So I'll reattach the radial arm uh, to the valve spindle. The valve is centrally in the valve chest and uh, both holes are covered. Try the other side. So it's now the reversing rod is now clamped in forward gear and forward gear is with the radius arm uh, lowered but not right to the bottom. I don't know whether you can see that there's still a bit of a gap there. And the idea now is we're going to start the relation between when um, the crank, when the rear crank is approaching horizontal dead center, either forward or reverse. So what is supposed to happen is when the crank pin is at full forward motion, the, the forward inlet valve should just be cracking open so let's when you rotate the wheel in a forward direction so I'll just put the crank pin rotate the wheel until it's in the forward direction fully forward and then we'll see what the status is of the valve the crank is, is, is at its full forward position and if we look at the valve it's not yet open so it needs adjusting okay I've made some adjustment to the return crank to the return crank I had to rotate it on its axle so the the rear crank pin is in its fully forward position if we now look I don't know whether you can see that but there's a if you look there there's just a crack of the opening of the steam port Let's see if I can
Okay, I've adjusted both um, valves now in the forward uh, forward gear, both sides. So what remains now is to put the uh, valve chest cover on uh, correctly with the with the O-ring underneath, tighten them all up, and then uh, test the uh, test the valve gear on air. Okay, we're now going to uh, fit the valve chest covers. I've very carefully removed them because if you remember they were on by two uh, they were fixed by two screws just so we could do all the valve timing and so on. So we've got the o-ring, we've got the additional uh, screws. Check that the o-rings that are there are centralized and so then we're going to put the o-rings on and, uh, and uh, mount the valve chest covers again. So let's see if we can do that. Yeah. Last one for this side. always tighten with the opposite screws if there's a gasket underneath. I'm going to be trying it on air to start with anyway. Okay that'll do for now so I'll crack on with the second one and I'll uh, and then I'll re we'll return when it's done. So there we have it. Valve, uh, valve chest covers are on, valve gear done, fitted and the static timing uh, done. All that's left now is to um, is to test it under air, under air pressure and we'll do that next time. Yeah, can you knock and kiss me? Yeah. So after running the locomotive for a short time on air, um, the instructions now ask you to um, pin literally pin the position of the return crank by drilling a hole through the center of the return crank and uh, through a small amount of the rear crank and then putting a pin in it but um, I'm going to hold off on doing that until I actually run the locomotive uh, under steam and then I want a, a fine-tune um, the valve gear timing and then uh, put the pin in but um, uh, before going any further with the build I want to make sure that this return crank doesn't move from this particular position uh, by mistake and so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to put a lick of paint over as an indicator small lick of paint 
over part of the um, uh, crank pin and the return turn crank. So I've got a visual indicator if that uh, return crank moves. Okay, just got a little bit of white. Well, I've done actually degreased um, uh, degreased uh, return crank and everything from where I'm gonna be painting. I'm just gonna put a if I can do that, I can show you that on the camera. So, that's it. Just put a white line on there. Put the paint just down and see if I can get that up to the camera. Don't know whether you can see that. Just put a just put a white stripe on the over the crank and the return crank just uh I'll let that dry out so then if the return crank moves then uh, I should uh, be able to see it. The M2 nuts uh, at the back here by the lifting arm, um, by the lifting link sorry, uh, I'll wait with putting the um, the Loctite on there again until um, the running gear is, uh, has actually been uh, run on uh, on steam. And that will actually be the next time that the running gear, the locomotive actually runs, it will be on steam. So that's the end of this series of videos concerning the construction of the valve gear. And next time we're going to be uh, moving on to putting everything in place for the locomotives to run uh, on steam.